it makes it a little, a little tougher. It's an imaginary area. Yeah. Okay. Okay, you can already say. So here's the shell method. We still have the basic idea of taking. Of taking an area and revolving it around an axis. Okay, so we're going to take this uh, area, this region, and we're going to revolve it around. And you can see the final product uh, right here. It gives you that three dimensional solid. It looks kind of like uh, a basin or something. And what the shell method is going to do, it's going to take now um, portions that are parallel to the axis of rotation rather than perpendicular to it. So you can see here our axis is vertical and we're actually going to take vertical rectangles and we're going to look at rotating those around and you can see that we're producing a shell. So we don't want to think about like a seashell. Well, it's kind of like because it wraps around. Um, and so what we're going to do is take all of these kind of cylindrical shells at all the different cross sections. And if we let these widths go down to nothing, <laughs> then we get the entire solid. OK? So what we're going to be looking at today, to be able to find the volume of this, we're going to think about the term um, circumference. OK? So based on this radius in here, we can find the circumference of this shell. And if you know the circumference uh, and you know the height, or the altitude of this rectangle, then you can find the volume of that individual shell. Okay, so here's your formula, and this is written out very technically. And again, we can go horizontally with the axis or vertically. So we'll just look at the, the differences real quickly. Are you going to tell us what P and H is? Yes, I will. Okay, so here's our horizontal axis. And let's go ahead and just get a a region that we're going to rotate around. Okay, so there's our region. Now when we do this, we're going to look for representative rectangles that are parallel to our axis. Okay, so any problems there? That's definitely uh, parallel. You can see that there. Now, what we're going to do is we need to figure out what all these things are. So from C to D, that's actually going to be from here up to here. So C to D is going to be perpendicular to the axis that you're looking for. Now, a um, couple of the things that we look for. P, P of Y is going to be this height right here. So really, what that is, it's the radius of our shell. Because you can see this thing is going to come down and around this way. Now h of y is going to be this distance from here to here. Why is it P They're just uh, generic letters. We're going to make it much simpler in just a second. Just bear with me. And then uh, dy, hopefully you guys know that as the width of the rectangles, All right? And that's going to be uh, right here. We could either call it delta y or dy. <coughs> all good to go. Okay, so based on all of this, we could find the volume of the entire region rotated around that axis. Okay. And notice our formula here. You see the 2 pi, and we think about circumference, and notice what that is. It's 2 pi r. So if we wanted to find the volume of the shell, you could do 2 pi r times h would give you the height. So anyway, this is kind of where this is coming from. So for our next one, we have a vertical axis. So you're, you're typing the surface, the, the area 
outside of it, how do you get inside basically? Well, you're taking the circumference. Which is the area outside. Yeah. And then we're multiplying it by the height and then also by the width of the rectangle. Yeah. So by the width of the shell. Wait, what? This is like the one we It's very similar. Like the hollow one? We're getting hollows, but now they're shells and not little disks that we're putting on, not little washers that we're putting on top of each other. Okay. So, um, because we're looking at each specific little ring rather than an entire uh, washer. So we're going like inwards out instead of bottoms. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's 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 these little shell it's like things. A stadium. Rather, it's, yeah, it looks like stadium seating here, but rather than just washers, we get entire shells all the way around. So we're working side views instead of top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just a different way. Of looking at it. Different way to to slice things up. Slice things up. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the vertical axis here. So we'll have our same type of function. And here's our region. So now, if our axis is vertical, our representative rectangle is also going to be vertical. Notice that's different. Before, we were taking it perpendicular and then swinging it around. Now we want it horizontal and then we're moving it around. Okay, so let's identify some of the things we have now. It's like an onion. It's like an onion. Very good. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to think, what does this remind me of? And then I was like, layers. And then I thought of Shrek. And then I thought of onions. <laughs> layers, Shrek, onions. Perfect. <laughs> so now, with our vertical, P is right here. So P is always going to be from the axis to your rectangle, but now this is going to be in terms of x, right? Because now it's horizontal. Okay. Here is your h of y. Oh, it's going to be h of x now. This one right here? This is the height of the rectangle. And notice it's a function of x because it's vertical. Yeah. Are we the only calc class? And then we still have the width of the rectangle, delta x. And now our a and our b, our limits of integration, go from this point to this point. And those are the x values from there to there. So that's the very technical type of drawing. We can simplify this just a little bit in our thinking. So the key is to use a representative radius, which extends from one edge of the region to the opposite edge. And the volume is going to be 2 pi, okay, and then radius times the altitude times the thickness. Okay, so that's going to be the volume of one of these things, 2 pi radius altitude thickness. Uh, the integral from a to b. So we can memorize this as <laughs> 2 pi rat. Okay. Yeah. Radius, altitude, and t. That's a very good question. So let's go back and identify those. <laughs> okay. So if we want to think about the radius, think about where we're revolving. So we're revolving around this line, and this is the thing we're revolving. So the circle is actually made with this being our radius. Okay, So that's like our R right there. Okay. Now, the altitude is actually going to be the height of the representative rectangle. So there's your A for altitude. And then T is the thickness of the rectangle. So thickness is right here, which is just going to be dy.
and you want your thickness to go to zero. Perfect. So if we're looking at the vertical, can you label the R, A, and the T? Uh, Delta X is R. There's your R. There's your altitude. And there's your T. Okay. Yeah, it's backwards. Hmm. Tar. Tar. Could have been tar. Could have been. Tar. You should have made it tar. Right. 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 Art. 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 Mm -hmm. You guys. This is a fun class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so let's go ahead and do a couple of these here. <laughs> so we're going to take this object here, <laughs> and we're going to rotate it about the y-axis. <laughs> so if we wanted to make a quick drawing here, we can kind of see. All right, it gets mirrored right here. And then this gets rotated around. Okay. And we have all of these. There's the hole inside. Okay. So you can kind of see the shape there. So what we want to do is we're going to take our axis, and then we're going to make a representative rectangle that is parallel to this. Okay. So here's our rectangle. And now we want to identify the radius, the altitude, and the thickness. So the radius is going to go from here. Over to here. Wait, so we're not finding the inside of that? The radius, notice the way we're revolving, that this is our radius. Okay? So in this case, it's just going to be x. <laughs> right? It's whatever x coordinate this rectangle sits at. Then we're going to look for our altitude, which goes from here to here. So it's the height of the rectangle. So the height of the rectangle is just going to be our function, which is x minus x cubed. And then our thickness is right here. Delta x. Which is delta x. OK, so here we go. To find the volume. Yep. As long as the. The radi like the function is like along the zero or always be x. Yeah. Mm -hmm. or like just yes. Be x. It's gonna be x unless your axis that you're rotating around moves. Okay. Then you might have to subtract from that x or plus yeah. Okay. So notice here, um, the washer method would get kind of ugly because we would have to change this function as a function of y, right? f of y. And notice if we did the, the top or the right function minus the left function, well, it's not really a function. See that? And so it gets really, really tricky to do washer method in this case. This is why the shell method is good for this one, because everything is easily found right there. So for something like that, if you were to do washer, would you do the right function and then use the, the midpoint? The You'd probably, because this is, I, I think it's symmetrical, then you could split it into two and then multiply it. But you're gonna, it's going to be a lot more thinking. So let's just go through this here. Okay, the altitude is going to be the height of this rectangle. And what's the distance from here to here? Well, that's the y value. And y equals x minus x cubed. So it's the function here that gives you this line. So it's where the top of the rectangle hits? It's where the top of the rectangle hits, which is the, the function of x, the y. OK? So looking at our integral, this is really going to go from 0 to 1. OK? And uh, the radius is x. The altitude, x minus x cubed. And then the thickness is delta x, and we're just going to change it to dx.
And from here, you can use uh, your calculators. We're not going to spend a lot of time doing that right now. Oh, so T is always delta X. <laughs> that, or delta Y? It's either delta X or delta Y, depending on... Whether it's square or square. Yes. Okay. So I'll trust that you can use your calculators. I don't know. Well, you <laughs> if you're struggling with that. That's true. My mom's so All right, let's move on. My mom's so mad at me. It's a super expensive calculator. Okay. So let's do one about the the <laughs> x-axis now. It's in the car. Okay. So we switch to a horizontal thing. I'm going to rotate around here. So you can kind of see what our region is going to be. Goes down to one. What about here? So that is uh, our revolution. And looking at this, our representative rectangle will be horizontal. Wait, why do you have one? Why did you draw a line? That's showing the revolution. No, like a line that it's five pretty. Plus one and five was negative one. That's the, What's the, the that's the bound. But it doesn't say negative. Right, but when you take this region, ah. rotate it. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now we need to identify the rat. <laughs> ah. That's clever. So the radius. That's the art in the world. What? You have to identify. Well, I guess zero, right? Just rat's better. So R equals Y. The altitude? Okay. Now notice this function gives you the value of x at any specific point. You see that? So that means this altitude is really e to the negative y squared. Oh. <laughs> right? Because it switched it around on us, and it's giving us the x value at any one of these points. <coughs> it would have been a pain if it, if it had said y equals, but it's not. Okay? And then t, our thickness, y, or dy. Okay? So... Let's go ahead and find our volume. Wait, did you ignore like y equals zero and y equals one? No, here's y equals zero. Here's y equals one. And that gave oh, us our region. That's one up there. Yeah, see the region here? Okay. So volume is. If we're going um, about the x axis or horizontal, that means we want to take this. From zero or across. Up. So notice which way our, our rectangles would shift. They would shift up and down, right? And so this goes from. And so our radius, our altitude, and then is with respect to y. And again, you can plug that straight into your calculator. About 1.986. Okay, we're going to move on. At the top of the um, 
in integration squiggly mm -hmm. line -y thingy? What's that number? One. This is a one. Okay, sorry. It's okay. All right, so our next one here. So we want to revolve. So we got x squared plus 1. All right, so here's our region. And we're going to rotate around our y axis. Okay, so looking at this, our shells, our representative rectangle, is going to be vertical. Why is it vertical again? It has to be. It's going to be parallel to the y axis. That way it's an onion. That's why it's like an onion. Instead of. Washers. No. <laughs> cool washers. Okay. So looking at this, we got a couple things we want to find. So R is X this time, right? R is X. Okay. Our altitude. Um, X squared plus 1. Good, X squared plus 1. And then our thickness. Delta x. Delta x, good. All right. is, um, is the area or the a part always the like fanciest equation? No, it's whatever line that thing touches, I'm assuming. Yeah, it's whatever this is. Okay. okay. So you can kind of see the See the shape that we're, we're creating there? Now notice the shell method is great on this one. You could do this one with washer, okay, but you would have to split it into two integrations. So you could do disks for the bottom and then washer for the top. Okay. So this is a little bit shorter. So the volume? This is 2 pi. Our limits of integration now, it always follows along the radius. Okay, does that make sense? So it goes from 0 to 1. Okay. Then there's our r. A T. A lot of times it'll equal X or Y. We're going to show the next two examples where it can be a different expression. Okay. I have a question mm -hmm. about college. Well, that, that'll have to wait. Okay. <laughs> okay. Where's 3 pi over 2? Again, you can get that in your calculator on your own. All right, now we're going to move to an example where the axis of rotation is not the y or the x-axis. Okay, instead it's the line um, x equals. So then, would r equal the number? Two. Would that be r? Now yeah, we'll have to figure it out. Okay. I'm so excited. <laughs> so here is here's our function. We also want y equals 1 and x equals 1. Okay. So there's the region that we are rotating around. 
So our representative rectangle is vertical. All right, because it's parallel to our line here. Now, when we look for our radius, it's going to be this length right here. So we know right here this value is x, okay, and that's from here to here is x. So how far is it from here to here? Two minus x. Two minus x. Very good. So we know that our our line is at x equals two, so that distance is two. Two minus x is going to give us all these right now. Okay. Now, how about our altitude? You want to take two prime part of these, right? Yeah. Okay. So our altitude is right here. Altitude is the the cube you want. Right? So it's the function. Yeah. But that gives me all the way down to the x-axis. So it's the function minus one. The function minus one. Good. Mm -hmm. So it's x cubed plus x plus one minus one, which is just x cubed plus x. Minus 1 because you need to... Because you got to get rid of this amount. It's not part of that. x squared plus x plus 1. Yeah, so if we want to find this altitude, it's going to be this function minus the one that it's already up. Because it doesn't go down to the bottom. Okay? Not really. Well, yeah, X. X plus X plus one doesn't break the yeah, it does. Why? It's the distance from here up to the function. So what would this sucker look like? Kind of see the little oniony piece here. Yeah, I like that. Anyone told you you should be an artist? Mm, not really. Or an archaeologist. What's it called? Ar architect. architect. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say an archaeologist. I'd love to do that job. That'd be cool. Which one? Architect. Okay. All right, so let's find our volume then. Smaller, I feel like you're going to end up like on an exotic island somewhere like when you're 50 and just chill with Mackenzie for the rest of your life. <laughs> okay, like what do we get here for... for our limits of integration? Now it's going to be, our radius is going this way. Good, 0 to 1. So you can see it's from here to here. So remember that the limits of integration are always along your entire path of the radius that you're choosing. 0 to 1? 0 to 1. Oh, okay. Okay, so you can see this, this path right here would be all the radii. And so that's what we get, 0 to 1. Okay, so our radius, 2 minus x. Our altitude, x cubed plus x. And then our thickness, oh, we didn't do that, but it's just going to be dx. Okay. And if you're dying to check these on your calculator, it's 29 pi. Absolutely dying. Rest in peace here. <laughs> Over 50. And it's great, we have five minutes and only one problem left. So we are so good to go. go. Perfect. Perfect timing. You planned this, didn't you? I... Nope. You just it's all luck, luck you of the draw, knew. you know. This one doesn't look fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, let's go ahead and find the area that we are going to be... Finding. <laughs> revolving. Oh, gosh, Mr. 
is a fun one. This problem comes courtesy of Mrs. Mrs. Dewar. So. If we had something like this, y equals zero, what would we have, like, this big line? Remember to deliver things to her, like, the tape or something? Yeah. So that line would just be, like, messing with you? If you also had y equals zero, then it really wouldn't make sense. Nick, you know Nick? Yeah, that's what I mean. I want you to notice... That if we were to rota rotate this around, let's see, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three. This would be a very difficult problem to use washer method on. Nah. Because if we were, if we were gonna t be taking, um, you'd have to do like three. You'd have to divide like the semicircle and the triangle, and then divide the semicircle into two, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. That would be super exactly. Hard. You would have to do like from here this section. Yeah. And then the over, other section. And then the other section and then the over, triangle. and then the. Okay. So washer method is not and the best, but notice when we switch this into a shell method we get a representative rectangle. And along the entire interval, we have the top function minus the bottom function for our altitude. And so that's going to work out very nicely for us. So let's find our radius. 3 minus x. 3 minus x, perfect. So it's already at 3 would be all the way to here, and if we want to go back to here, it's minus x. What did you say about that altitude? What's the altitude going to be again? The altitude? Yeah. It's going to be top minus bottom. So the top function is x plus 2 minus the bottom, which is x squared. And then our thickness is dx. This is your favorite part, isn't it? I like drawing it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you always do it, even though you don't have to. Unless you're not looking an onion. It's an onion. It's an onion. You're welcome. I gave you that picture no, that first. No, you didn't. So. Okay. So, let's take a look here at our volume. 2 pi. Limits of integration. Negative 1 to 1? No, negative 1 to 2. It is negative 1 to 2. And again, to verify that, you just set um, the two functions equal. And then solve for x. OK, so that's where we got the negative 1 and the 2. And our radius, 3 minus x. Our altitude. This is all with respect to x. And it gives you 70.68 inches. Can you do 45 pi over 2? No. 45 pi over 2? 45 pi over 2? Yeah. Well, if it's the same, then... What is the... All right. Simon is on Mayalu. Yeah.